All right, uh, I'm Nick. I, uh, I'm a data scientist at DataCamp, and I'm here today with Charlotte Wickham. Uh, we just finished recording uh, the videos for her new course on working with geospatial data in R, uh, which I'm really excited about. Uh, I think she is as well. Um, so welcome. Thank you. Um, so maybe uh, uh, to kick things off, I, I'd like to know, do you consider yourself uh, a statistician, a data scientist, a data analyst, a data miner, whatever? You could rattle off a bunch of different terms, um, and then, and why? I, I think I have to label myself a little bit as a statistician because my PhD was in statistics and I live in a statistics department at the University of Oregon. Mm -hmm. Uh, except that you know what I what I really love doing is working with with data and, and doing data analysis and mm -hmm. uh, programming and making data analysis easier. Uh, so I think I think that makes me a little bit of a data scientist as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, fair enough. Um, so you you are uh, an R guru. Uh, you love programming in R, and that's clear from working with you. Um, what is it about? So. How, how did you first come into contact with R, and what is it about the language that uh, that excites you? So I first came into contact with R at the University of Auckland, where I was doing my undergraduate in first math and physics and then statistics. Mm -hmm. So R, uh, R's home is at the University of Auckland, so it's like in every single statistics class you take. So, mm -hmm. so it was my first exposure not only to R, but also to programming. Mm -hmm. So I, I think what got me excited at that point was simply that I hadn't really done any programming before, but this was this way to like automate things, to make things easier, to record like all the steps in, in what I'm doing, and that was sort of like a revelation for me. That mm -hmm. like I no longer had to point and click to to record like how I did something. Mm -hmm. um, so that's how I got started in R, and then I haven't really stopped. I've sort of been using R, you know, almost every day since then, like many many years ago. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So I'm I'm really interested in this. Um, uh, generation of people who consider R to be their first programming language. So I actually fall into this camp. I did a little bit of programming uh, in, uh, in my undergraduate studies, but uh, the classes were exceptionally dry and boring, and we weren't working on really any interesting problems. We were just talk talking about like big O notation and, and, mm -hmm. and programming and, and like C++. Um, so uh, um, I started to learn R, and I was using it for cool and interesting stuff. I was getting exciting outputs, like almost from day one, and and that was enough motivation to propel me forward and keep learning. And then I learned R as a programming language, and I, I don't think I'm alone. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I'm curious what you think about about people like that, and and will there be more people like that in the future? That's a good question. I think you know I think that's the way I learned R. So I sort of identify with that, that, you know, the, my first R classes weren't, you know, weren't really touted as programming. It was just like, look, here's the tool we're going to use to get these results. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I knew so little that it was really like I was copying the code exactly and like making these tiny changes to, to get what I wanted. Mm -hmm. um, and I think like that's a, a pretty accessible way to get started. Um, and it's a great way to see like these you know, capabilities really, really quickly of what R can get you. Mm -hmm. So that you have that motivation to be like, oh, well, how does this actually work? Like, how is this a language? Mm -hmm. How do I learn the structure and the, the principles of this language to start, like, expressing myself rather than just, like, parroting back mm -hmm. what somebody else has told me? Um, and I think that will, I think that will continue. I think so many people are seeing R as sort of the, the means to the end. Like, they, they need to get something done, and R is one way to get it done. Mm -hmm. Um, and I hope that when they see they can get it done, that that sort of inspires them to learn more. Yeah. Um, and I think we're in a great place now because there was there were very few resources that sort of helped you move from a sort of an R user to an R programmer, and, and those resources are, are much better and much more mm -hmm. available now. So I think we'll sort of see more people taking that transition as well. Yeah, sure. Um, well, at, at least partly in thanks to you, because the other course that you've you've done with us to date is the writing functions in R course. Mm -hmm. And that that is really um, the first step to becoming a, a programmer, right? It's like when you stop just beca be being a consumer of other people's functions that they've compiled into R packages, um, and you realize that, wait a second, 
people wrote these functions and mm -hmm. I can write my own functions to mm -hmm. do things that they don't do in theirs or, or things that I, I want to do for myself. And that's a, I think when I started writing my own functions is when I really realized the power of programming because all of a sudden I could construct my own tools mm -hmm. and not mm -hmm. rely on other people's. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, and, and that course in particular is very exciting for me because that's exactly what, um, what we want to do at, at Data Camp. We want to help people make that jump from consumer of the language to programmer or developer. Um, okay, cool. Um, so what, what sorts of things are you most excited about spending your time on over the next few years? Good question. <laughs> I think, I mean, I think I want to continue um, you know, continue helping people get into R and helping people make this transition to R programmers. So that means I want to continue teaching. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, I kind of have two ways of doing that now. One is like hel helping out with data camp and getting sort of reaching this incredibly broad, remote audience. Mm -hmm. um, but I also really love teaching in person and having that mm -hmm. kind of one-on-one -on -one, like instant interaction. Yeah. Uh, which I think can be really useful when you're when you're learning to program, to mm -hmm. sort of have someone there to kind of go through things with you. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one sort of thing I'm interested in and continuing to do. And then I definitely want to get a little bit more involved in the sort of programming in R, in that community. Mm -hmm. um, start contributing to, to more packages and, and, and also sort of start, there's sort of definitely a movement to, to kind of open up the, the community to sort of more diverse groups and I'd like to sort of help Mm -hmm. help people that are, that are interested in getting involved that, that maybe historically haven't been, been involved. Okay, very cool. Um, so one great example of that is like the Our Ladies group. Yeah. Uh, so I've yeah. been in contact with, with them recently and mm -hmm. they actually recently um, uh, opened up a, a chapter here in Boston um, mm -hmm. and I think that great. the first meetup might be next month. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so I, I'd, I'd love to attend. Um, yeah, you don't have to be a woman to, to attend, um, which I, I, I learned. Um, yeah, so, so actually jump, just jumping back to something you said a minute ago about um, making contributions in the open source community, um, we were talking about this last night, and um, a great way to start getting involved in the open source community is to um, look at the GitHub, go on GitHub, github.com, and find the repositories where um, the developers of your favorite packages are keeping their code. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're using their packages frequently, you probably become opinionated about them, some things that they might do differently, and you might even occasionally run across a bug. And um, with the advent of version control and, and code sharing uh, via places like GitHub, you can poke around and you can find the source code for mm -hmm. whatever it is that's causing the problem you're having or whatever it is that you think could be done differently or better. And you can actually make changes. So you can create a, your own copy of that, of that mm -hmm. software, mm -hmm. make changes to the code, and then propose the changes back to the, the original author in the form of what's called a pull request. And there's, there's, no, um, there's no one to tell you that you can't do this. You can go out to any repository, on any public repository on GitHub tomorrow and, and make these suggestions. And then it's mm -hmm. up to the author to decide whether they they approve of those suggestions mm -hmm. and merge them into the source code that everyone else will then will then use. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a very long-winded way of, of of asking the question like, um, so what what role do you see like version control and these code sharing platforms like GitHub having in um, developing future R developers? Mm -hmm. um, and maybe what other suggestions do you have for people who want to get involved in, um, in software development or, or open source? What are some of the things that you're thinking about for yourself even? Sure. So I think, I think GitHub, you know, this whole idea of version control and then having it all publicly shared mm -hmm. um, is sort of amazing. Like when I started in R, that wasn't happening. Mm -hmm. so, so sure, it's an open source software. You could dig in and find that source and look at it. Mm -hmm. But there wasn't really a way where you could um, sort of ping back to the author and say, hey, I've got this idea for a change. Mm -hmm. Is it a good idea? You know, can I make it? Mm -hmm. um, so I think GitHub really facilitates that, that you know, ability for me to grab the code and have a look at it. Mm -hmm. um, 
but also for me to kind of suggest things back. So I think that's been a great, a great benefit to the R community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there still are a few packages that aren't on GitHub, and it's always kind of a little bit frustrating when you come across them because mm -hmm. you're like, oh, there's this, this thing going wrong. I really want to figure it out and, and try and suggest a change, but I don't know where the source lives. Yeah, yeah. You, you can probably still get your hands on the source, but it's, it's maybe a little bit less straightforward or mm -hmm. unclear mm -hmm. where it's being kept. Yeah. It, uh, and I think one other thing that people are starting to do as package authors is sort of on that GitHub README, they're, they're kind of keeping um, track of, you know, things that they, they maybe want help with mm -hmm. or, um, you know, how to go about contributing. Are they open mm -hmm. to, to con contributions? And yeah. I think um, that makes it a lot easier for people to, you know, feel like they can jump in and, and suggest something when the author's saying, hey, I need help. Sure. Um, help me out by working on this. Yeah, it's intimidating uh, to think that something that, um, uh, that, that some suggestion that you put forward is going to be evaluated by the person whose software you use on mm -hmm. a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and that if, 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 if that, those changes actually end up getting merged, that now all of a sudden thousands of people might be using software that you've played a part in developing. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that can all be a little bit scary. So I, I agree, actually, that's, um, I, I love I love the idea of having the the package developers proactively reaching out to would be contributors and telling them how they can contribute in a productive mm -hmm. way and, mm -hmm. and hopefully re lowering that that barrier to entry yeah. for people. Yeah, and it's also nice to see that a lot of packages are sort of implementing automated testing mm -hmm. so that you know at least you feel like yes I've made this this contribution I've made this change but mm -hmm. I know it hasn't broken everything. Can you actually just elaborate a little bit on that for people who might not be familiar with like Travis CI and that sort of stuff? Sure. Um, Without going so, into the nitty, nitty gritty. Yeah, it, essentially, um, as part of the package, people will write sort of a sequence of, of tests that, that need to pass, that need to be successful before they're going to release the package and onto CRAN and let everybody else use it. Mm -hmm. um, so when you make a change, you can kind of rerun all those tests and check that they all, they're all still successful, that they, they all pass before mm -hmm. even that, that change is even sort of considered as a, as a an, you know, being uh, integrated into, mm -hmm. the, into the code base. Cool, cool. So it's, it allows you to do a self-assessment maybe before uh, formally proposing changes to, yeah, the, to the software. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. I think it also if a package is already implementing that, if you're suggesting something new, it sort of mm -hmm. forces you to think about what the test should be. Mm -hmm. um, and that's sort of a, a nice way to, to think about what your code should do and how it should function. Sure, yeah, that's really interesting. Um, so maybe just to, to wrap things up, um, the course that you, you've been working on is this mm -hmm. is geospatial data course, um, which is a fun combination of like manipulating geospatial data um, like, well, getting it into R, manipulating it, and, and visualizing it, often um, in the form of maps. Mm -hmm. You do a lot of work in spatial, um, spatial statistics. Um, why should people be interested in um, spatial stats or, or working with maps or geospatial data in general? Why, why do you think this is an interesting field, and why should people care about it? Good question. <laughs> um, I think. It's a, it's a little hard because I find this sort of inherently interesting. Like as mm -hmm. soon as something has location associated with it, I want to stick it on a map. I want to be able to look at a map. And, th and maybe mm -hmm. that is because sort of historically maps were our first visualizations. Mm -hmm. um, that, you know, we've, we've been sort of working with maps as a human race for, you know, hundreds of years. Yeah, sure. Um, and I think, I think sort of naturally we're pretty good at like, we're like oh, I want to see it on a map. Show me a map. Um, yeah. We're pretty good at kind of navigating and, and exploring them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think, you know, there are just so many um, sort of spatial type um, da data out there that, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think increasingly, you know, everything, we're recording so much more location data, you know, that people are being tracked with GPSs and their phones, like, mm -hmm. almost 24-7. Yep. Um, and that kind of tapping into that and exploring it is, is interesting. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, no, I, I find it very fascinating, and I, I agree. I love the visual component, um, and it's it's very. It was very cool to me the first time I, I built maps in R because mm -hmm. when I first came to R, it was never something that I really thought about doing in R. Mm -hmm. I thought, oh, mm -hmm. cool, I can build like a linear regression. Yeah. Now, but I, as soon as I realized like there's an API to like Google Maps. Uh -huh. 
and you can like pull in a map with one line of code and then like plot points on it with like metadata. Mm -hmm. um, I was like, wow, this is this is extremely powerful. And now there's even tools to make those maps interactive mm -hmm. uh, and put them on web pages. And yeah, um, yeah, it just opens up a lot of a lot of possibilities. Yeah, I think the first the first GG map map I made, I attached a GPS to my cat for a day because I, <laughs> I wanted to know where he was going. Yeah. So I brought that data back into R and I could, you know, put this little trace on the screen in a plot and I was still like, I have no idea where this is. Yeah, yeah. But one line, you grab that map from GG, GG map and it's in the background and I can say, okay, there's my house. Yeah. And here he is, like, spending the entire day at somebody else's house. Yeah, that's, uh, that's really interesting. <laughs> cool, a hacker in the truest sense of the word. Um, all right, well, thanks a lot for answering the questions. Um, this, was, this was great. Yeah, it's great to be here. All right, cool.